hello again. Here we are to continue our discussion of JavaScript, D3, and data visualization. In the last video, we reviewed uh, SVG, right? And so we talked about how to set properties on SVG objects and experimented with that. In this video, what I'd like to cover is how to load data with SVG. And there's a section in the lesson that you can refer to. So I'm going to go to um, the lesson here and wait, sorry, I just lost the page there. Loading data. Ah, oh, there we go. Loading data. <clears throat> so uh, for this example, you'll um, we'll. I have some sample data that you can load, and we'll use um, JSON data, but D3 also works with SVG. So um, JSON data is loaded this way. You'll say D3.json, and what's going to happen is it's going to return a promise, and you can handle the data like you would handle any other promise. So you can call .then on it, okay? Um, you can also load CSV in the same way. So if I had a file called metal.json, I have one, it, it it's all metal bands, right? Um, so we can call on it and then call .then, and then it'll give us the JSON, and then we can handle it in some way, okay? Um, down here, if you did CSV, you could load metalbands.csv, and then you can say .then when the data is loaded, okay? Um, let's give it a try. So uh, I have a link here, and this is the homework assignment, right? It says D3.js mini challenges, right? And there is um, a few files in this folder here. Um, let me actually go get, uh, let me view the code, right? So here we are. So there's a couple files in here. There's a readme that, you know, describes the, the repo here. And then there's a couple folders here, right? And what I'd like you to do is go through the, the, the information in these folders and follow the challenges that are in the HTML document. It's written in here as um, comments. So if you look at lab number one, you know, you'll see that it's got some HTML stuff in here and then it has some D3 stuff. And then there's a comment that's asking you to do something. So we're gonna come back to that later. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna download this repo and in the data folder, there is several different um, you know, uh, files that have various data. So here's some CSV data for cities, distance covered in JSON format, there's sales, there's the Titanic passenger data, right? So we can use this one so we're familiar with it, but then you can use these other ones to do the, do the other examples, okay? So let me go to the top level of the repo and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the big green button and choose download as zip. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the um, to the challenges folder here. And in my folder, I have, um, let me actually arrange this. So I'm gonna go and uh, let me show this in uh, Finder. So here's the folder that we're working with in the example. Here's my JSON data here. I'm just going to grab the Titanic data. You can just Command C. I'm just going to copy it. You can even just Option drag it too. So just drag it into here. And now I've got a copy of it over here, right? I'm going to leave this one in here. So when I get back to the homework, I can just use that folder, right? But for right now, since we're working in this example folder, I'm just going to copy Titanic passenger data there. OK, great. So we can see the Titanic passenger data here. So how are we going to load data? Um, let's go back to our example here, right? Oops, uh, let me make this like a little bit wider here. Yeah, here we are, right? So loading data. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to, first of all, actually, you know what I, I'm going to do first is I'm going to comment out this previous example. So that one won't be affecting us while we work, right? Okay, great. So what we want to do is we want to load the data. And our data is in JSON format. So I'm going to call d3.json. And then we want to um, include a path to the file that we're looking for. So I want to get the Titanic passenger JSON. And um, d3.json is going to return a promise, so you're going to handle that promise with .then. 
So you say, you know, this returns a promise here, and then we're gonna say dot then. You could also write it like this. This is a common way to write it the way I was doing it, but as an alternative, you know, if you wanna be more explicit, we could say const um, p for promise equals, and d3.json returns a promise. And on the next line, we can say p dot then, so promise is an object, and if we call its dot then method, then we can, you know, provide a callback that will be executed when the promise is done doing its work, okay? If the promise was fulfilled or resolved, okay? So we can put uh, we can put this in here. I'll put an arrow function as our callback, right? And what's going to happen is whatever this resolves to will get passed to the callback. So it should resolve to some JSON data, okay? We could call this Titanic, or we could call it data. You can call it anything you want, right? And then over here, we can decide what we want to do, right? And there's a couple ways we could arrange this. You could call a function to handle your D3 stuff, or you could just put the D3 stuff inside here. I'm the, that's what I'm going to do here because it'll be easiest. So I'm going to say D3.select, right? And let's make a, um, let's use the SVG. So I'll say um, SVG here, right? And what I want to do is just do all the things that I did down here, right? Except when we get to this data right here, okay? So we're going to do something different when we get there. So I'll say D3 select, and then I'll say um, dot uh, select all. Oops, yeah, select all uppercase, right? And I want to select all the circles, right? Not with an S though, just circle object, right? And then let's enter the data. So you see there's a pattern, right? And you can always go back to this, you know, this series of things like select, select all, enter, and append. And I have that on the cheat sheet heading in the document, right? So now we'll do append. And we want to append some circles. So imagine I want to draw a circle for each passenger in the Titanic, OK? So uh, let's do that. So I got my circle here, and um, let me see. So my it's going to be kind of hard because I have 500 pixels, but I have 891 passengers, right? So they're all going to overlap a little bit, right? So uh, oh yeah, we got to um, add our data. I forgot. So so after we enter, we want to um, or before we enter, we want to add the data. So I got enter here. Let's do dot data, right? So what we're going to do here different for data is data expects us to put it in an array, but I don't have an array, but I do have this JSON object that has an array of, of you know, Titanic passengers in it, right? So I'm going to put the JSON object here, okay? And now let's, we got our append, so we're going to append a circle, and let's set the, um, radius of every circle to, um, let's make each circle, we'll have to make them pretty small. So let's do, uh, how about three pixels? Okay. And uh, let's do attribute. Um, let's say, uh, maybe let's set the, the color and stuff, right? So let's give it a fill. So the fill color will be, um, let's just do black for now, right? We can change that later. Maybe based on, oops, I got to put a dot there, right? Maybe based on the, um, the uh, you know, port of embarkation or something like that, right? And D3, actually, for those situations, it gives us some special um, tools that will help us handle situations like ports, right? Or not ports, but like, you know, a situation where we have like three values, right? Or six values, right? Um, to choose from. It's called a scale, and we'll, we'll get to that later, right? So anyway, so right now I got my fill color there, and maybe I want to set the X and the Y. So let's imagine we want to spread the passengers out across across the bottom, x and y, right? Um, or along the x anyway. And then we want to set maybe how much they paid for the, um, or let's do, uh, let's do their age on the vertical, right? So we'll say uh, cx. So this is the horizontal position. I just want to line up all the passengers, right? 
So I'm going to put my callback here, right? And what D3 is going to give me here is one of the items from the array. And in this case, the item is a passenger object, right? And it'll also give me the index of that passenger in the array. So what are we going to do with the passenger now? So maybe, actually, you know, I don't even need the passenger. I just need the index if we're just going to spread them out evenly along the bottom, right? So I can just say, let's return the width of the um, of our SVG document divided by the number of passengers. So I got JSON.length tells me how many passengers there are, right? Okay, let's take a look. Um, oh, do I have an error here? Let me look. Hmm. Maybe I'm missing something. I feel like I should be seeing, oh wait, there's all my passengers in the upper left corner as a tiny little dot. So I think it's working. I just need to put in a couple more. Oh yeah, and look, here's all the circles that I've created, right? Okay, so I gotta just do a couple more things. So it is working. I got, there's my passengers there. Let's do length uh, times I, right? So now I have a line there. And really what it is, is it's a bunch of little three pixel circles spread out, 891 of them spread out in a row, okay? So that's um, the X. Let's set the Y property now. So let's do attribute dot um, Y, right? And we'll set this to, um, we'll need a, a callback here, right? And this is gonna get the passenger and the index of the passenger. So in this case, I want to use the passenger, and maybe I want to set um, the position, like the vertical position, based on like their age, right? So I think the passengers were like between like zero and eighty, right? So um, let's do this. Let's say let's just divide by a hundred. We have a better way of doing this with D three, but for right now, we'll just do it in a simple way. So we'll say return. How about the passenger? Now remember. We have to work with the passenger objects the way that they're written. So our passenger objects, if you recall, they have um, a like this is the whole object here. And if we say dot fields, we get to this object here that has you know field data in it, right? Which is the fare, the name, the age. Right. Actually, I guess this guy doesn't have the age, right? Um, some of them have age. Yeah, this guy has age, right? So some of them are missing the, missing some properties, right? But but essentially, we got to go to fields and then go to the property that we want, okay? So let's uh, let's do that. So I'm going to do fields.age. Uh, let's do divided by 100 times uh, 500, like that. So there's our passenger data um, spread out on age, right? It's kind of a, maybe a, um, like a scatter graph, right? It would probably look better or make more sense if we ordered them by age, right? So then we could see a, kind of a progression starting from how many people were youngest to how many people were oldest, right? But anyway, that's that's how we would load data with, with, with D3, okay? So we just did a similar graph to the earlier ones that we did, similar drawing. We did it this time with data from a JSON file, like an external file. So again, the the the, the deal here is you're going to um, you're going to call D3, and then you're going to load JSON with the JSON method, and you'll include a path to your data, and then you'll handle the loaded data by handling the promise returned from D3.json. If you were loading CSV data, then you could just say D3.csv. Okay, and I don't have, I don't have a, I don't, I actually didn't load the CSV data, so, so we're going to take that out for now, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that's helping you um, with your, with your uh, D3 projects, and, and thanks for watching again.